Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, his playing career, he played for uh, under, I guess, as the backup to guys like Marino and Favre. He played for some great coaches. You know, how much of that, you know, do you take when you were a player into your coaching now? I played for Favre. I played for Marino. I played for Shula. You know, I played for Mike Holmgren. You know, do, can you uh, expect him to take some little things that he learned along the way with those guys and implement them into the way he coaches? Sure, I, I think so. But anytime you're talking about Hall of Fame level players, it's difficult to to sort of take what they had and, and teach it to other people. Because when you're talking about guys like Marino and Favre, that's the upper one percent. That's the crust, and guys just don't have the physical ability to, uh, you know, repeat what they've done. So that that part's difficult. I, I think the the part of it that I like is that Doug Peterson you know, probably taught more uh, about the position than anybody else to Brett Favre, and he'll say that. Uh, and if you think about that, it says a lot. And, and then the second part is this guy spent a long time in the NFL, and he didn't have NFL-level talent. And, and what that tells me, talked a little bit about that with Pete yesterday, he's just got a tremendous football IQ, and people respect him, and and he just knows what to do and, and particular circumstances when it comes to playing that position and that's the kind of stuff he can teach uh to young quarterbacks or or even a guy like Sam Bradford if they want to bring him back and go in that direction yeah and uh you know with the hiring of Peterson some people would say well why didn't they just wait until after the playoffs were done I guess this is to start assembling the staff so that he can start making calls even though you're not really officially allowed to announce it no, you can't announce it until their season is done. And, and, and I think that part of it is some of the reason it's, it's coming off bad is because the reports came out that the Eagles were going to, to proffer an offer to, to Ben McAdoo, and then there was, which I believe is completely false. I, I don't think Tom Coughlin was ever going to be the head coach of this team. I, I don't think that part of it was on the table. Uh, and then you had Chip Kelly getting a job out in San Francisco. I think things started to swirl out of control and, and the Eagles were coming off as, as sort of laughing stocks, whether it was fair or not. I, I tend to think it wasn't all that fair and they sort of leaked the information. Uh, but obviously they can't announce it to the Chiefs are done. And, you know, we've already started speculating about coordinators and I think some of the names you're hearing are really, really impressive, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, let's go over some of them. Uh, Jim Schwartz at the top of the list, and uh, Eagle fans will hear the wide nine should they be worried if Jim Schwartz gets the job and implements said wide nine. Not at all. Uh, He's done a phenomenal job coaching that defense. We talked about it a couple weeks ago about him as a potential head coaching candidate, and and the Eagles should look at him. Uh, If you look at what he did in Detroit, what he did in Buffalo, uh, remember the, the situation of the wide nine failing in, in Philadelphia. Jim Washburn getting hired before Juan Castillo. Juan Castillo uh, is an offensive coach, not a defensive coach, and that was one of the probably the strangest move of the entire Andy Reid uh, regime here in Philadelphia. So just because it didn't work uh, under a group that didn't work well together doesn't mean it hasn't worked in the NFL. And Schwartz has had a ton of success using that type of defense. Uh, and and I think the talent here is more suited to play that type of defense now, especially when you talk about guys like Fletcher Cox, who would fit right in as the under tackle, and, and Benny Curry, if they can get him, Ian Brandon Grant, uh, shape up his great weak side pass rushers. Who are some of the other possible candidates that you're hearing out there, John? I saw Mike Pettin's name, and obviously he was a head coach in Cleveland, but he got there uh, because he was a pretty good defensive-minded guy. Yeah, exactly, and and he's he's sort of P to Jim Schwartz today uh, because Schwartz has some other interests from from teams around the league. So, but again, when we talk about impressive candidates for coordinator position, and I think one of the, one of the Another example of, of some of the good things that Doug Peterson's going to bring. He understands he's a first year head coach. So he needs experience at the coordinator positions. And that's what you're hearing with names like Schwartz, who's been a head coach in this league. Mike Patton, who's been a head coach in this league. 
Brad Childress on the offensive side, he's been a head coach in this league. Uh, that's the kind of guy who understands. He sort of he, he knows what he doesn't know, so to speak, and he understands he needs people on this staff to kind of help him along as any first year coach does. And I think it's important that he understands that, and those are the kind of people he's talking with. Hey, uh, what are some of the offensive names you're hearing, John? Who are some of the coordinators over there? Is Shermer going to be uh, considered? I guess Peterson and Shermer, um, you know, uh, crossed paths before. We we're hearing Brad Childress's name. What are you hearing about offensive coordinator? Yeah, it's it's Childress. He, I, I think he wants to bring him along, and obviously people know him from being the offensive coordinator here in the past, uh, being the head coach of the Vikings. I, I'm not as in love with that as the defensive side of the ball, uh, just because I think if, if you look at Brad in Minnesota, his real only success was when Brad Favre was there and sort of Brad did whatever he wanted to do. Uh, before that and after that, uh, Brad was very autocratic, similar to Chip Kelly, and it was his way or the highway. I, I, so I'm not as excited as that part. I would rather uh, try to keep Pat Shermer and, and try to bring him on as the offensive coordinator. And remember, he has head coaching uh, experience as well. So all these names, that's the one thing they have in common. And, again, I think that is important for any first-year head coach to have guys with experience in the coordinator position. John McMullen's with us here. And, uh, you know, Doug Peterson has been named the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, You know, is this a uh, panic move? I mean, should they have re- you know, Tampa made their hire. There was nobody left. There was no other teams to really battle with here. I guess Tennessee to some extent, but – uh, should the Eagles have waited it out a little bit longer? Uh, was was or was Doug Peterson? Are you comfortable with uh, the the way they ended up getting to Peterson? I, I'm not comfortable the way it happened, but I'm comfortable with the hire. I, I I said yesterday on Twitter, and I still say it. I think they got the right guy. I didn't think they did it correctly. I think they lucked into it. Uh, I I think Peterson is a better long-time coaching uh, – his upside as a coach to me is better than Adam Gaze or uh, Ben McAdoo. Now, the Eagles didn't think that, and by no means am I trying to spin it that way, but I think they lucked out and got it right by mistake. So I think people who want to look at, at Doug Peterson when he was a player – aren't getting it. I think if they want to look at Doug Peterson because they dislike Andy Reid, I, I think they're playing revisionist history. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons why I have so much confidence in Doug Peterson, because of the guy who's been mentoring him this entire time. Some of the things we've heard uh, as um, negative, uh, get your thoughts on this, John. Uh, he was a bad NFL quarterback. Does that impact him as a coach? Absurd. It, the opposite. I, I, I would, you know, I compared it when we were on a Tuesday show. I compared it with Kevin Holland, who, who I told you when I was covering the NBA. If you ask me the smartest player I've ever covered in the NBA, I, I told you, I, I've, I've said for years, it's Kevin Holland. And, and he stayed over a decade in the NBA, even though he didn't have NBA talent because he never made a mistake. And all of a sudden, he becomes a coach at UConn, he wins a national championship. Uh, these are the guys you're looking for. If Peterson, similarly in the NFL, his football IQ was so high, his skill set belonged nowhere near the NFL. But he managed to stay in the league for a very long time just because he understood the position so well and he could teach people like Brett Favre and Donovan McNabb, who one is going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, going to go in next year and the other is a borderline hall of famer i i think that says a ton uh, of what doug peterson is capable of doing as a coach uh what about uh people who look at the chiefs 21st 25th 27th in total offense they've gotten worse every year under him in total offense uh he doesn't call the plays um they're 30th in passing this year in a passing league uh that was another complaint yeah, I mean, the Chiefs don't have a, a ton of talent. But I, I think people get caught up in raw numbers. If you look at uh, the efficacy of those numbers and, and points scored, uh, Kansas City's in the top ten. They're also in number six in rushing, despite the fact that uh, Jamal Charles was, was 
gone for most of the year. I think he played five games. Uh, and, and they improve, and they've improved, believe it or not, in the passing game because they managed to get Jeremy Macklin. They they have a threat outside the numbers. But when you look at Kansas City last year, for instance, uh, didn't have a wide receiver uh, catching a touchdown pass the entire year, and that you know that's not Doug Peterson. They just didn't have talent at, at that particular position. And the quarterback is what he is. Alex Smith is a smart quarterback but he's not the type of guy who's going to push the football down the field. So for the tools he's had, uh, I think he's done a solid job. And, and it, you know, to me, Kansas City goes into Foxborough this weekend winning 11 straight games. And it, it, that is pretty impressive because no other team in the NFL, even Carolina, because they lost late in the season, yeah. That's the longest streak in the NFL. John, I'm perplexed by some of the people's, um, you know, Adam Gaze and Ben McAdoo combined for 12 wins uh, as coordinators. They're hot names. Peterson has 11 wins, and he's a boob. I, I don't get it. The uh, Another complaint you just brought it up, his receivers did not catch a single touchdown. Total panic hire. Uh, look, this Chiefs team, top 10 in the NFL in points scored, and points per game. They're one of only nine teams in the NFL to score over 400 points. Meanwhile, the Bears, led by Adam Gaze, scored 335 points this year. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we Jay Cutler, you know, people say, I, I think, I really do think this is fantasy football. This is an environment created by the boom in that industry when people are so obsessed with statistics. And they look at Jay Cutler and they say, Oh, this is his best statistical year. The Bears came in last place. They were six and ten football team. They once won double digit games with Jay Cutler. Same thing I said with Eli Manning. He's won six games in two consecutive seasons. And this is a guy with two Super Bowl ranks. And people are trying to tell me he has never played better. Now obviously uh, the success and failure of any professional football team is not hinged solely on the quarterback. And and things have gone far worse for New York defensively, coaching-wise, in every particular position. But as I always says, when they talk about those two Super Bowl wins, nobody wants to talk about Justin Tuck having one of the great Super Bowls in history. They say Eli won a Super Bowl. So you can't have it both ways. I don't understand the love affair with, with Ben McAdoo. I don't understand it with Adam Gaze. They might be successful, but if you're putting those three names up and, and asking me who I would rather have, I'm taking Doug Peterson. And that's not to say, uh, you know, Mike, I'm not an apologist for the Eagles by any stretch of the imagination. There are plenty of other candidates out there I would have rather had. Hugh Jackson, uh, Sean McDermott, uh, some of the some of the big name coaches who who weren't realistic, the Grudens of the world, but he wasn't coming out of the Monday night football booth. But if you're putting those three names up to me and asking me to pick one, I'm taking Doug Peterson every time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I'm not saying that Peterson was the number one guy. Again, I, I thought the safe route, if you're looking safe, because they all seemed that, that they were safe. There was no flashy guy that was going to get you off your seat unless you were going Gruden down that road. Uh, my guy, you know, I would have just stay, stuck with Shermer. I don't know if he sticks around or what, um, but uh, Peterson, to me, I'm okay with. It, it, it at least uh, makes you feel like um, it makes you feel like you went for a guy that's going to kind of bring stability back. Whether or not he's a great coach or not, we'll have to find out. We'll see who he brings around him. Uh, but I think it's uh, kind of interesting. John, let's get a quick uh, rundown of the games this weekend. Pittsburgh took a big hit. Uh, they're going to lose Antonio Brown. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, they're going to lose him. They're also going to lose Anto- uh, D'Angelo Williams. Uh, Big Ben probably going to have uh, somewhat of a separated shoulder. Do the Steelers have a shot on Sunday? I don't see how. You're, you're talking about – that might be the best receiver in football, Antonio Brown. Uh, D'Angelo Williams had a great year. This will be the second straight game. Obviously, he's done for the season, I would imagine, even moving forward. Yet that was kind of highlighted by the fact that he went to Dr. Anderson in Charlotte. That tells you Liz Frank injury. He's not going to be back this year. And then, as you mentioned, Ben Roethlisberger uh, with a sprained AC joint, couldn't throw the football 10 yards down the field less than a week ago. I can't believe he's going to do much 
against those corners in Denver. So even though I don't have a ton of confidence in Peyton Manning, I, I think the Broncos and that defense are going to roll this weekend. In fact, that's the one, I think, gimme game this weekend. I, I think you can take Denver going away because of the injuries. Would have been a good one. Pittsburgh. Would have been a good one. Pittsburgh's offense against their defense. Let's move to uh, Russell Wilson against Cam Newton in Carolina. Uh, obviously, the Seattle Seahawks two-time NFC champions is the run end. Yeah, they got to play better than they did last week. Obviously, they shouldn't even be in this game. Uh, if Blair Walsh kicks a 27-yard field goal. Now, Marshawn Lynch is probable. That, to me, if he gets on the field, uh, and all the indications are he should, that makes uh, Seattle more well-rounded, and, and it should be a tougher game because you have to deal with him. Even though there's going to be some rust, there's no question about that, you have to respect him and what he brings to that offense. Uh, and that's going to make things more difficult for Carolina. But, you know, 15-1 and one team isn't 15-1 and one by mistake. I, I think the Panthers are going to win that game, and I think they're going to win it pretty comfortably. Not to say three touchdowns, but probably a 10-point game. Um, on the Saturday game, let's go with uh, Arizona. Uh, a lot of people think they're the most complete team. Vegas has them as the favorite. They just whipped Green Bay a couple of weeks ago. Can Green Bay get revenge? I don't think so. I, I think, as you, yeah, you mentioned, Arizona is just too talented at this point, and, and we know all the problems Green Bay has had offensively with the wide receivers and the offensive line. Their left tackle, David Bakhtiari, probably is going to be back, uh, and that will help a little bit. But when you're talking about him, you're not exactly talking about an all-pro, a Joe Thomas, a Jason Peters in his prime. So it's not like they're getting back this huge talent. Uh and I don't think it'll be as bad as 38-8, which it was in Week 16, but I, I think that one's going to be pretty comfortable for Arizona as well. All right, uh, and the last one is Kansas City uh, and New England, where uh, obviously the, the, you don't know. I mean, Gronkowski didn't practice one day this week. Will he be disciplined? Probably not. You had the uh, Chandler Jones situation there, um, you know. But New England is getting healthier. It, can Kansas City with? Uh, uh, you know, this momentum, they haven't lost in like about three months, it seems like. Can they keep it going? I, I think this is an interesting game just because I think Kansas City is a tough matchup for New England uh, with their pass rushing. Now, Justin Houston is questionable. Obviously, he's got to be out there. Tom lee has got to be uh, healthy and ready to go. Also, their, their cornerbacks are really difficult. Marcus Peters, the rookie, has been tremendous. Sean Smith, those are the kind of guys who can shut down uh, New England's outside receivers, and that means the seam routes. And Gronkowski's always going to be tough, but as you mentioned, there's knee problems, there's back problems, forgetting the synthetic marijuana issues and the fact that Chandler Jones was at his house. A lot of controversy going on, and, and, and Julian Edelman's going to be back, but as we saw with Des Bryant, just because you're back doesn't mean you're 100%. And with a broken foot for a receiver of that nature that relies on a short area quickness, that might be an issue. And remember, Kansas City has Eric Berry at safety, so that's one of the best three or four safeties in football. And, and they're more well-structured to, to, to deal with New England and the same than most teams, even if they're 100%. So. I, I like this matchup for Kansas City. You can never, ever take anybody in January in Foxborough, though. Uh, I think the Patriots will win the game, but it's close. It'll be a field goal game uh, in the fourth quarter. All right, uh, John McMullen at J.F. McMullen. More uh, on the Eagles and, of course, the head coaching higher at 97.3 ESPN.com. All right, John, enjoy the weekend. Hey, you too. Enjoy the game. All right, uh, we'll do. And, of course, John, every day at 4.05, talking NFL and Eagles football with us, 97.3 ESPN.